Hello guys and welcome to a new Warno video today by me Vulcan. In this one I have for you a 1 versus 1 on Vertigo and I'm going to be going up against Waffle and that is because this is the first game of round 1 of the Warno League. I'm really excited to play in this but today I'm going to be using the 82nd Airborne and Waffle's chosen to use the KD-8 Berserk Airfoot. So the way that the Warno League works is it's kind of like a round robin initially and then it moves on to like a knockout stage. So I've got two games up against Waffle, this is the first one. I will be bringing you guys the second one and then the following week I will be playing against somebody else and so on and so forth. So there's going to be plenty of Warno content, particularly 1v1 content on the channel in the future. I've also joined the Still Division League so look out for that content as well. But let's have a quick look at what we've got going down here. So. I've got a mix of a lot of different units. We've got some Stingers. I was a little bit worried about his helicopters early on. Also, his aircraft. The KDA can bring in some cheap bombers that can be pretty nasty. So, Airborne Scouts, AB Military Police with the M67 recoilless rifle. I've got a Toe 2 in there. I've got an AB Fire Team with the Dragon. We've got the Stinger and a third Stinger. And then I brought in an Airborne Team with the Dragon. Uh, into the mid here we've got airborne we've got the ab fire team with the dragon and then i've got another airborne there on the right side more stinger squads we've got the airborne scouts it's going to be the airborne engineers with the flash launcher which is the napalm and then i've got the two ab stingers and another ab military police at the front so trying to use those recorders rifles to snipe enemy units i've also decided to deploy with two leaders so I've captured both Bravo and Delta here with my Humvee CPs. I made a conscious effort to bring in these at the start because I've been caught out a lot of times where I don't bring in commands at the start and then the enemy do. And that way what happens is the enemy gets a big lead. And you can see already I'm starting to count up a lot of points because I get a plus six very early on. And it helps that I do have advanced deployment. We have... 3,534 advanced deployment meters there, which allows us to deploy really far forwards and get into those sectors really early on. Anyway, we're going to be getting my stingers into position. I was expecting most of his infantry to come into these buildings, but it turns out he brought them over to the left. So I'm going to be bumping into his Spetsnaz. KDA does get a lot of these Spetsnaz, and these are nasty squads. They're 12-man squads with RPO napalm launchers. And then the Spetsnaz DP here do have the RPG-29, which is very good at killing armor. But going to be losing my squad on the left there. The engineer's going down very quickly. I've also lost a Stinger squad early on, but my airborne are in a good position on the right-hand side. I say good, good-ish. I also brought over my airborne scouts that I was originally going to be deploying on the right. Meanwhile, on the left, a Spetsnaz DP did come really far forwards, but bumped into all of my units here, so it ended up going down. And now we're just trying to deal with the Spetsnaz DP out in the open. I've also managed to get an AB fire team onto the left here. And I've got an airborne scout all the way on the far left that's just going to be providing me uh, with information about any potential flanks. So this isn't really the start that I wanted. Yes, I haven't lost too much in this initial opener just yet, but my airborne are in a really bad position. They're getting hit by the SBG-9. They're being shot by the SBW-152K with its 50 cal. And then we've got the two T-55s firing at it as well. So that's not very nice. I'm going to be bringing up a couple of heavy hogs. And these heavy hogs uh, are going to be looking for the kills onto the Spetsnaz for me. Also got uh, the Mordschutzen on the left here. It was, what was funny is he dropped off his infantry and he tried to sell his transports. And then I tried to sell the transports. <laughs> we basically just go backwards and forwards here capturing it from each other. <laughs> uh, on the right in the meantime, yeah, airport does get killed. I managed to keep one in cover. My stingers are kind of in a bad spot right now, but I've still got the plus three because he only bought one command early on. So I'm actually 576 points up. My airborne with the dragon here trying to move forwards across the open are going to get pinned down by the SBW-152K and the T-62. So I'm off to a pretty bad start, honestly. Um, my stinger on the right does get killed. The one on the left can't really run away without getting killed either and does end up going down regardless. These airborne, I'm going to have to try get deeper into cover because the armor's coming at me. Like, overall, yeah, it was a pretty bad start. 
M1IP though, going to be on the way and this is one of the big tanks that we have access to. Definitely going to pretty much dwarf anything that the KDA Berserk effort can bring in. I've just got to be a little bit worried about potential cluster that could come down on the M1IPs because that is certainly something that's uh, quite normal at the moment. Anyway, Spetsnaz DP trying to come across the open there. Also going to be seeing the Modschutzen. So the Heavy Hog's going to be aligning its big old 127mm rockets. And goodbye, Modschutzen. This thing is very efficient at killing enemy infantry squads. Spetsnaz coming through though, and going to be dropping on my air bomb. Air bomb not technically in cover there, I think. Also on the left, the MiG-23 came over and tried to kill my H1F, but the Stinger shot it down. So that was good, because I do have three Stingers. So that's exactly the sort of thing that I brought the Stingers in for. Not necessarily for the planes going for my helicopters, but for other planes at least. <laughs> so they're doing their job, and my Heavy Hog survives with the one health there. And his plane crashed right into the side of the mountain. But yeah, one thing I'm trying to do here now is recover my position, because it's a pretty bad position. I've got my M1 IP kind of pushing forwards out in the open. Very vulnerable to cluster right now. Uh, I've got an Avenger behind it, obviously providing protection from enemy helicopters and enemy aircraft, but going to be limited in its effectiveness. It's not going to stop a cluster strike from coming through. It might shoot down the unit afterwards or like the aircraft afterwards, but either way, yeah, I kind of realise I get a bit too far up and I'm going to wait for my airborne to move up instead. Now I have brought up a Chinook that's going to be providing me with my supply. The Heavy Hog there going to be able to get itself some rockets and this is going to turn into a little base for me like a little fob, like a forward fob that I can use to get my Heavy Hog fixed up in this case but also get those rockets. So the M1IP trying to get rid of this T-55. I was wondering where he was going with this T-55 initially. I was a bit worried that he was going for some like elaborate flank. But with this map, like the starting sector is here, but your CVs are quite far up. So they're relatively well protected regardless. Like you don't have to go too far back to deal with any flanking maneuvers, but I am going to send a little bird over there just to check in the meantime. I've also got an AH-1F moving over on the left and kind of checking these tree lines, making sure there's nothing there. Airborne fire team in the meantime though, yeah, really struggling against the two PKMs of the Spetsnaz. But do you have the grenade launcher Humvee? I actually really rate these. I think they're very, very useful. So you see I've got one on the left there. There's decent fire support against these squads. Now the Dragon does take out the T-55, so that was a really nice hit. And we're starting to chip and pin down these Spetsnaz squads while my infantry tries to press forwards. Got some more infantry coming in on the left. Some more airborne dragon just to help defend. And I've got an M1 IP also there to help defend. And my thought at this point was I need to get more CVs in. Like I need to build a bigger lead. Because I wasn't really happy with like where I was at right now because like the right side's looking really bad for me. So I want to try and capitalize by at least like sitting a leader in on the left and getting some extra points before I get shut out of this sector. But I brought up the Humvee Toe 2 and that's going to be trying to kill the T-55. Unfortunately it misses that shot. Also meanwhile my little bird does die on the right hand side which kind of gave me a bit of anxiety. I was like oh no <laughs> is it going to be coming round? <laughs> You've always got that worry. Oh, this was uh, fantastic. The good old Stingers trying to shoot down the MI2. Do end up taking it down eventually, but it definitely took a bunch of shots, that's for sure. All right, airborne leader finally arriving. M1IP does take an engine damage from a shot out of the trees. Don't have any recon here, so pretty blind at the moment. I'm a heavy hog. I'm going to shift that over to the right hand side to go check out what's going on. I've also decided to bring in an AH-1F ATAS, which is the air-to-air -air Cobra with the stingers, so that I can combat any helicopters that might have come around the flank. But we managed to get this sector capped, and I'm going to keep them back in the corner here. 
And I believe I put them on like return fire so they don't like reveal themselves easily. But yeah, left side's looking relatively safe for me. Just as I cap that though, he caps the right side. So I'm going to have to work out a way to potentially contest this in order to get myself a lead because at the moment he could still easily get a command into this corner and if he does that then he's going to have the plus two advantage for the game so yeah, we need to find a way to contest alpha or I need to find a way to get to the other side but I know that there's a bunch of stuff in this tree line that I've got to worry about or at least that's what I thought at the time uh, meanwhile, though, Airborne Dragon going to go down. And this was kind of annoying. This MI-8TB was really difficult for me to deal with. Also on the left there, you might have seen my Cobra got shot down. It's because an aircraft came out of nowhere and shot it. But this is a problem because I can't really get my AA far enough forwards to shoot that down easily without the AA getting killed itself. But this is like a really well-placed MI-8, and you'll see that really do a bunch of damage to my infantry in the future. But I decided to be cheeky about it regardless. I'm going to be bringing in the Airborne Leader. I've also got the Airborne Dragon here that's going to be moving over to the right hand side so that we can, again, try and get this under control. Or at least, you know, make sure that nothing is there that's going to like zoom down this road and come kill my Humvee CP. Like I even brought in this military place here, as you can see, but I just forgot to unload it. I'm moving this supply over to the left. Get the Stingers more missiles, get the Toe 2 more missiles, that was the intention there. T-55 comes out in the open, gets hit in the face by the Dragon, and the Toe 2 is going to finish it off. Toe 2 is a really nice weapon system because they do have 65% accuracy, which makes them hit more often than not. They're going to be shot out of cover again, so the AB Fire team going to have to do another runner. Going to be bringing up another AH-1F Cobra, got the Heavy Hog ready to go again so I'm going to be moving that up and I've dr drove the M1 IP all the way back to the Chinook to get the engine damage finished I was just like fast moving it down the road what are your orders, sir? Got another M1 IP and with the airborne leader unloading further up the tree line I kind of slowly move it down the tree line so that I can counter cap this sector so we're going to be going to a plus two I'm trying to get my Avenger forwards to get into range of the MI2. And you can see how limited the range here is of the Avenger and of the Stingers. It's only 2,400 meters. So you've got to get relatively close to shoot this stuff down. And that's why it was like such a problem for me. Because anything in these buildings or like any tanks in this tree line could just shoot my AA. But he's going to be trying to use his SBW-152Ks to scout. I do have my Humvee Toe there. And that's going to be able to just hit those units as they come forwards. T-62. Going to have to smoke itself off as my AB fire team has a go. Otherwise would have been a side shot. And here comes some artillery. Now these are big rounds. So I know that he's bought the Malka. And the Malka is... I think one of the biggest artillery pieces in the game in terms of like firepower and those two shots took my 12 man squad down to 5 man I do have a supply already on the way in the form of the M35 supply but I'm also going to be bringing up the UH-60 supply which is Black Hawk supply so that I can keep this topped up even though he's going to be arting it the whole time and I managed to shoot down finally the MI2 after the Avenger really whiffed a lot of its missiles there. A little bit of a combined forces attack though going on. I've got two Abrams, I've got the M3 A1 Bradley, and I've got the Humvee there with the AB fire team moving up. SBG9 is going to smash my Humvee early on. On the right hand side this is the PT-76, that's going to go down. Heavy Hogs just wasted its ammunition on the Humvee. Now I've got to deal with the uh, KDA shoots and whilst my M3A1 is trying to snipe the SBW-152Ks with its TOW-2. Also got the AH-1F hanging about. It's moving over to the left so that I can put rockets on the KDA Schutzen. 
This is why I feel like the 82nd is a really decent pick against KDA Berserk Erfurt. I'll leave the uh, map pick and ban in the comments by the way and also the uh, pick and ban for the divisions. Obviously you guys can see what we picked but at least the bans will be in there. And yeah, the the reason I picked the 82nd in this case is because rockets are a really good way to deal with like these chonky infantry squads. Like 14 men is really difficult for your own infantry and particularly like tanks to deal with. You saw my um, Humvees with the grenade launchers kind of struggling. But with the rockets, they do the job. And it's really nice, especially the 127mm uh, rockets that you can get with the heavy hogs. You can see that I'm just kind of bringing that back, I'm sending the other heavy hog forwards, and I ended up just like cycling helicopters as and when I needed the rockets. The airborne scouts, they're running ahead to give me obviously recon information so that I can shoot stuff with these Abrams. But this M1IP definitely took a bit too much damage for my liking. I've also got an Apache in now. The good old Apache, look at that beast. The rocket Apache with the 70mm rockets. Gonna be killing that SPG 9 for me. This uh, airborne scout obviously getting low, but my M1 IP in a good position here to engage the T62 on the left. And this is a really good engagement for the uh, M1 IP. That's why, again, another reason that the 80 seconds is really good, because although you don't get many of these M1 IPs, they do really outshine uh, anything that KDA has. And while the MI8 is trying to go for the M1 IP, I rush forward to the Avenger on the road, and we're looking for the shots there. And I do manage to take it out. Unfortunately for me, one of the HGMs did hit from the MI8 in the meantime, and then the T62 came forwards and killed my unit there. Also going to be losing the Avenger for that, and that is the risk of getting that far up to kill a helicopter with your AA. That conquers. Going to be showing itself. Again, kind of unlucky for me. The conquers hits the Bradley just before I'm able to kill it with my Cobras. Now my M3A1 looking for the kill onto the T62. It has to hit that, otherwise it probably dies itself. So good for me that it did. And now I'm one of my Cobras, unfortunately getting shot down by the flat SFL. One of the really good units actually, out of KDA Berserk Effort. I have to pull back my Cobra just a little bit there. Now Waffle is going to try for a bit of a push on the left hand side with his T-55s. He's looking to breach this tree line. But I do, of course, have my Dragon team ready to go. And I've also got the M1 IP there kind of waiting. Now for these Dragon teams, it takes them a couple shots to kill one of these T-55s. But if all of these fire at the same time, yeah, that Dragon team is going to die very quickly. I mean, while throughout the game, he was arting this. Unfortunately, <laughs> my unit that I was trying to get across to get fixed up ends up being collateral in that engagement. MiG-27 goes for the AT shot onto the M1 IP and fortunately misses. Uh, but yeah, my M1 IP is going to be moving up. The, the key here is to not show to too many of these at the same time. And if I can do that, then I'll be fine. If I am have all six of these firing at my Abrams, it might end up getting side shot, and also it might just get overwhelmed. But I've got another M1 IP that was on the right hand side here, and I've moved it to the left to help cover this off. The Dragon's doing a really good job. I've also managed to come over and get the Tow 2 supplied, or at least I'm trying to supply it. It doesn't look like it is supplying. The Abrams, yeah, really, really just being clutched there. That's exactly what I need. Warning. Now the MiG-27 coming in, though. <laughs> Does take it down. So AT plane getting the job done. I did buy an Eagle. But with that being shot down already, I didn't need it. 
but at least I have it on standby for the future. And I also put it onto a control group. So I had like a control one, which means you can bring it in a lot faster when you realize, like rather than having to move your mouse down to the left, click it and then right click in, you can just press like one right click and then it will come in immediately if it's on a group. But this M1IP is in a really bad position right now. <laughs> it's uh, going up against these Vago uh, UAZs and also the T62s. So I'm gonna try and bring this M1 up to help engage. So we get like side shots and we also get, uh, you know, superior firepower because basically mine, my tanks are better than his, <laughs> simple as that. But there's these Spetsnaz, they're gonna be putting an napalm under my tank, so I'm gonna be forced to fall back. And then a shot comes out of nowhere from the Spetsnaz DP, I assume it was, and pops that M1 IP. Now overall, I have six of these M1 IPs. I think at this point I'd lost like two of them. And we're gonna almost make that three as the MiG-27 does come in. It's gonna fly right over a lot of my AA though. The ATAS trying to get shots off. The Sting is on the left getting the killing blow and the Eagle also coming in there to have a go. Does end up getting hit, which is going to take a little while to reload now. And I've also got this MI-8T to worry about that's going for a little bit of a flanking move over on the right hand side. And this is what the ATAS is useful for covering off, so going to be moving it back to the right hand side. We're going to land it next to the supply helicopter, get those stingers resupplied, and then I can move back to the right. We've still got more artillery coming in on the airborne leader, as you can see. But I'm just keeping the M16s turned off, and I've got the supply here that's just fixing up the squad every time. You know, there's a little bit of a break in the fire. So now I'm going to be making a little bit of a push. Brought up some airborne that can push up. Managed to take out the Spetsnaz DP there, which was nice. And now I'm just trying to get away from the SPG-9 before it kills my low health Abrams. I didn't realise that this was low, because I had sent one back to get fixed up, as you can see. This heavy hug, lucky to get away from the flat SFL. Meanwhile, the Apache going to be trying to help out with the rockets onto the Spetsnaz and the KDA, but didn't really hit the mark. Right, meanwhile, on the right, ATAS shoots down that MI-8. You can see I've also brought up a, another one here to help out. Right, MiG-23 going for the kill onto the AH-64. And you can see the difference that's made. Like These used to one run pretty much anything in the sky, but now they really don't. Ends up getting shot down as it flies back over my lines. And you see, I ended up landing my helicopters here because I didn't want it to be targeted by the aircraft and if they are landed the I think the main gun can still fire at them but the like AA missiles cannot so that's why I landed them short but they ended up being obviously out of range of the supply for a little while I'm gonna be ringing up an aardvark the F-111F with the napalm coming in with onto the KDA Schutzen unfortunately an OSA double taps that. Bit unfortunate. But hoping that I killed at least something in there. Because I want to try and break into this area at some point. I'm just trying to soften it up. Meanwhile, on the left, my ATAS is harassing this MI2, but ended up missing most of its missiles there. And these little birds, well, they're going to be pushing forwards aggressively on the left to try and find the enemy command. And you can see that it is basically right there, or at least that's what I assumed it was. I was hoping that I could maybe keep eyes on that to kill it, but it turned out not being the case. Meanwhile, little bird's going to be <laughs> going after the elf batter. Looks cool. Not much damage, though. 
And on the right hand side, Fargo are going to be going down. A little bit. Going to be pulling off. Try and keep them alive at least if I can. And since we saw what was there, for the most part, I'm going to be trying to get my airborne dragon to move forwards and deal with it. So I'm trying to get the little bird out wide so that maybe we could get eyes on it, but it doesn't have recon capabilities, so I can't really see that far. All right, Spetsnaz now coming forwards, looking for my airborne leader. I managed to take out that, and I'm finally moving my helicopters back into the right position here to get them more missiles. Another M1IP is going to go down. I moved it up on the left to try and attack with this airborne dragon. But it ended up getting like overextended and I assume it got side shot. Uh, meanwhile over here, yeah, these are MiG-21s. They were trying to rocket my leader again. It went down to 4 health. But the Eagle managing to get some really nice kills there. I believe I only claimed the second kill because the first one got shot down by the Stingers and that's going to be getting out of there afterwards. So yeah, that went down to four health that time around. Almost died. But the supply going to be fixing them right back up again. And more airborne have arrived looking for another push back into this sector. Just really want to like get into these buildings. I probably should have got this under control first because... Attacking here without this controlled is actually really awkward. And I've got the airborne pushing forwards. We're going to have the Humvee trying to help. Unfortunately, nice positioning of this MI-8. He's going to be able to rocket a lot of my airborne here. I'm trying to get the Avenger forwards ASAP to engage this, but my Avenger... It hits this MI-8, which has already run out of rockets. But the other one is still firing. The MI-8 MT there. Meanwhile on the left, F-111 with Napalm. Going to be going for the enemy AA. And my Napalm was hopefully going to hit the enemy infantry. But I believe Napalm's just not really that strong at the moment. And my Abrams did end up going down. I think he got killed by the HGM of this 100mm AT gun. And my airborne, after being slapped by rockets, aren't looking too healthy. So the units that are in cover, I'm going to be able to take out the rest of them pretty easily. And I'm trying to obviously retreat them as you can see, but due to the low cohesion, they move slowly. And that's obviously causing issues. ATAS on the right, I'm trying to take out this MI2. But run out of stingers before it can shoot it down. Right, airborne are gone. This airborne dragon also trying to get back. Yeah. Any attempt that I was making to push forwards with this infantry just really wasn't working out. Admittedly, what I should have done is attacked whilst also having my helicopters here join them. But only the Apache really was ready to help out because the other one's hovering at the moment and this one's too far away to resupply. So some of my logistics play here was questionable, but it like managing this whilst also trying to pay attention to the front line is uh difficult. I'd also like to say that uh, I mean I didn't really say this early on, but this is like the first 1v1 play game that I'd played in a long time. So I was very, very worried going into this, but it seemed like my general knowledge of like micro in these games was helping me out quite a lot. And this Abrams, lucky to be alive, because that artillery came in very close by, to, and it was already down to like two health. I've also now brought in some toad artillery. <laughs> that doesn't look right. <laughs> I brought in. So, no, that one's gone as well. <laughs> Some toad artillery that we're going to be unloading shortly. And that's going to be trying to help soften up some of these infantry positions. Thing is, with 82nd, you don't really get a lot of decent artillery options, and I ended up actually forgetting I brought these in for a little while. 
Right, this is a good example of why these rockets are so important. MiG-27. Really, really annoying MiG-27 for me there, because not only did it kill the M1 IP that was hanging out on the edge of the tree line, it also sniped one of my airborne in their transport before it unloaded. <laughs> it was really bad. So I'm not really in the position that I would have been with two squads to push forwards. But I'm going to be getting a new supply in because this one was getting low. And the supply here had been absolutely crucial to keeping that airborne leader alive. Unfortunately, this heavy hog does get hit by an OSA missile. But having a hard time there and ends up getting shot down just as it recovers. Humvee firing away again. Nice thing about this Humvee now is it's a three vet, so <laughs> very accurate. But I need to make sure that these die before they spot the airborne leader. Because the main reason that this is alive right now is because he doesn't know exactly where it is. So he's having a hard time like pinpoint like getting pinpoint accurate artillery fire on it or like a bombing strike and you can see like all of the artillery strikes bombing strikes that kind of stuff was just off to the side for the most part which means that the airborne leader never died and it gave me a chance to like get them back to full strength before he brought in another strike so oh, that was super important but having all of these supply dotted around in these locations was really nice because you can see I'm just going back slightly landing behind the tree line getting full ammo and headed back again I'm having to pull back this M1 IP because the HGM there being a bit of a pain and meanwhile on the left ATAS going to be taking out the MI2 now because I send it back over there I think one thing that I, I do need to do better with this division is it does what well, can bring in some airborne infantry and I think like if I took advantage of that over on like the left hand side here and stuff I could probably start like ambushing the roads a bit which would give me a bit more pressure on the front line because it would force him to like unload stuff early not that it matters as much in Warno if you unload infantry because obviously the transport still hangs around but yeah even so it could have like harassed attacks like this. So you can see Wolf 4 coming at me here with a bunch of units in these trucks. And it's just a matter of do I have enough H gems to kill them all before they get too close. Artillery's now unloaded and harassing on the right. Napalm's going to be coming in. Unfortunately I end up killing my own Stinger. But we are going to end up killing all of those VPB that he brought in, which I believe are military police, but we're spamming them forwards. And my Napalm F-111 does manage to stay alive, and the Eagle comes in there to claim the kill, so that worked out nicely. And I'm sitting at this lovely 1,230 score with eight minutes left on the clock. And this is where, like, bringing in my commands early on really paid off. Because it would have been a lot closer at this point if I hadn't have brought these two uh, commands in from the start. Like it would have only been like 500 points ahead and then like a push that he makes where he takes out my leader could really do a lot of damage. But he's going for another push here. This time he's smoking it off which was a nice play. But I do have all of the units in position. Like, I've got a lot of units here. Like, we've got the ATAS on the left that was rocketing in. We had the Apache on the right. My airborne scout's kind of covering this. Unfortunately, the OSA getting some shots onto my Apache, though. Trying to get that out of there. And the VPB, they do have submachine guns. So they actually cut down my airborne scouts. And they are going to find my airborne leader. Fortunately for me, we've got a Gatling cannon, we've got an M1 and tank, and <laughs> my airborne on their own are also pretty good. So I'm going to turn on their M16s, and we're going to kill that squad nice and quickly with the help of the Bradley as well. 
Now, I just need to run the other direction, because <laughs> he's going to try and get rid of that. So he comes in with the bomber. Fortunately misses. Misses a second time, trying to hit the Bradley. And the third one, I don't think actually dropped its payload. And we shot down every single one. Oh, that was a cluster one. So that wasn't going to do any damage. So a big win for me there. He tries to move the MI2 across and all of a sudden things just get really intense <laughs> for me. I was like, oh god, it's like running my M1 leader all over the place. It turned out that his smoke actually covered the movement of my airborne leader quite nicely. So what I decided to do was smoke myself. And uh, yeah, just keep some more smoke down, give myself time to get this into a different position. I was worried that this one might have seen me, but again it targeted the heavy cover, so ends up missing. And uh, yeah, I could imagine he was getting quite frustrated at this point, having not killed the airborne leader. This was the airborne leader that could, that's for sure. <laughs> so I just gotta wait for it to recover, and there you can see it's getting back on its feet. Back up to four men, five men, and it's gonna be 12 men in no time at all. And I'm keeping the smoke down with my own artillery now just to be able to have that in the back of the sector in a place that he can't see. Yeah, it was uh, <laughs> quite the game so far. Very, very close, very much on a knife edge. On the left, Heavy Hog gonna be absolutely deleting that much Shitson. And now with five minutes remaining, He's really trying hard to get towards my commands. Little bird there. Going to be moving it forward so that when the KDA shoots and comes up, we're going to be able to hit that with a double minigun. Heavy Hog, meanwhile, going to be going to get some more rockets. SU-22 coming in with the cluster. I think what Waffle thought was that I had the airborne leader there, but I probably also had like a leader tank or a, or like a some sort of armored command. So that's why he was bringing in like the HE bombers and maybe thought that he killed the airborne leader and I'd replaced it with something else. We shoot down the SU-22 anyway, and I'm going to be having more smoke come down just as that dissipates. You see on the left here, I've, <laughs> I've got my ATAS just hanging out. I end up seeing his convoy on the way. I'm going to be harassing that a little bit. Here goes the little bird. Firing away. They don't do nearly much, as much damage as you'd hope they would. <laughs> but Airborne Dragon here going to be taking out Spetsnaz DP. And I believe it also took out the other unit that was uh, low health there. So it was nice. Now continuing the harassment here as I've got the Humvees coming up. And I'm going to be looking to do another napalm cluster strike. So I've got the F-111s coming in. Unfortunately, lose one of the Humvees to the 100mm AT gun. That was kind of my bad. I should have unloaded them early. I also shouldn't have had them this close together because it means they all get stunned by the same stuff. But yeah, napalm going to be hitting the complex. And then I have the cluster actually targeting the armor and the AA further back. I do end up losing both of those. I'm going to be taking out the book and whatever else was there. And the napalm should have hit the mark, but I don't think it ended up dropping because it got shot down early. Or maybe I cancelled the strike or something, I'm not sure. Anyway, airborne pushing forwards, supported by the Bradley and the Abrams. On the left, SPW-152Ks just like rushing towards me. As quickly as they can. My Humvees have been put in position and they are covering the open nicely. We've got the MI-8 coming forwards to try and find my airborne leader. Going to take out the MI-2, going to take out the MI-8 and the little bird goes down on the right hand side. This little bird trying to cover off against the Spetsnaz and just a little bit of bursts of like big intensity battles really making it difficult for me. But it also meant that I ended up like really floating quite a lot in this game. I think I, I have floated quite a lot. Uh, Totu trying to find the SBW-152K there but missing. 
still getting more smoke down on the airborne leader. The airborne here, able to stop these SPWs. You can see there are much shots in there. Down one man. Yeah, what a game. One minute, 20 seconds left. Apache is going to be riding forwards to get some rockets onto these KDA shoots and and yeah it's going to be very difficult for him now to get back the points he needs in the time that he has left flat SFL does take down my AH1F8 ass but I replied by killing the flat SFL so it wasn't too bad he's brought up an MI8 with some re or some with some infantry on it but that's not really going to be enough I've got my Avengers moving forwards with my M3A1 Bradley to provide some recon. And yeah, pretty much it. T62 is coming in. My airborne here, unfortunately, getting slapped about by the rockets of the MIA, but I do manage to shoot that down with the Avenger. And the airborne here, they're going to be able to get, I think it was a side shot onto the T62. The other nice thing about the airborne is they can fire the AT4s really fast, so. Ease up all of their ammo, stopping those T-62s in their tracks, and the, the Apache just cleaning up some more of the KDA shits in the meantime. And that's pretty much it. Not a massive fan of mortars. I feel like mortars in general are quite lacklustre at the moment. They're great for smoke, but that's about it. And there we have it. Major victory after 40 minutes on Vertigo. 8,455 kills to 5,930 losses. And what I said to Waffle after this game was that maybe if he didn't focus so much on that one command unit and he instead focused a lot of those aircraft on like my actual units that were trying to protect it, like the M1 IPs and the other infantry nearby, I think he would have had a generally a better time pushing through that sector because he could then just like kill the command with whatever units managed to actually push through in the end rather than trying to rely on artillery on those planes to get the job done instead because i was just like running circles in that corner <laughs> trying to dodge all of that artillery and airstrikes it was crazy <laughs> i i feel like the airborne like was pretty lucky to actually have survived some of those bombing strikes and stuff but at the end of the day like having the supply there was really clutch <laughs> to keep them topped off so two really important kills onto a lot of this transports, particularly ones with some infantry in. Check out the Heavy Hog. This thing costs 100 points and killed a decent chunk of infantry and those uh, UAZs and so on. M1 IPs in some cases didn't really kill that much or get that much value, but they are good enough to stop the KDA from pushing in the open because they don't really have anything to match it. Uh, otherwise the stingers were doing a good job of shooting stuff down on the left on the right maybe not so much on veto look at that beautiful killing the t55s killing the t62s using its range to its advantage apache with the rockets getting plenty of kda shoots in and the spgs that's what you like to see m1 ips cleaning up t55s there's so many kills here the avengers actually really really important killed plenty of stuff for us and yeah, then his Malka, that was uh, the artillery coming in. This survived a way too long. I should have killed this way faster. Uh, both of these like AT guns, I could have killed very easily with my artillery if I'd actually remembered to use my artillery throughout. It would have made my life a lot easier. But yeah, good game to Waffle. And that is the first of two games that I'm going to be playing against him in round one of the Warno League. So we're 1-0 up. Good start. But that's it for now. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Okay,